Right, so, hello everyone. So this is not, teaching's not my strong gift, like, so you'll have to bear with me, like, you know what I mean? I'll do the best I can, but um, share a bit of testimony before I start. So um, what I've been seeing on the street and stuff, so since I've been, because I, I didn't know really what to say today, like, you know what I mean? So I prayed to the Lord. He said, Kev, you know, you know what to say. He said, just say what you do, basically. So I thought, okay, yeah. And I tried to break it down into bullet points and that. But I'll share a bit of testimony, like, um, you know, the things I've seen on the street, and it's not, not being done by me. It's, it's done by God. You know, God does the signs through us. And um, I've seen people who've been blind for 20 years get the sight back. I've seen cancers disappear. Seeing people set homosexuals set free, Muslims set free, become Christians, seeing Sikhs, witches. Um, I've been blessed to see all sorts of different people getting healed from a multitude of things. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only a baby in this really, like, you know what I mean? There's people that are doing much more. I mean, John, what I heard he's been doing, phew, amazing. So, you know, if you do do what the Bible says, you will see these things, you know what I mean? So anyway, I'll start the teaching, yeah? So the first thing I've got, yeah, because the teaching is um, on boldness, isn't it? Boldness, boldness. in evangelism, yeah? yeah? Uh -huh. So the first step I thought is, obviously this is um, presuming that you're already born again and you're already filled with the Holy Spirit. So, you know, this is a teaching for born again, Holy Spirit filled believers. And so the first step for boldness, I, I personally think it's uh, repentance. You know, it's um, repenting. It says in Proverbs 28, verse 1, that the righteous are as, the wicked flee when no one's coming, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Uh -huh. And so I think it's so important to be right, walking right with the Lord, you know, having repenting of your sins and turning away and, you know, overcoming them areas of your life, what you need to overcome, because it produces boldness. You know, when, when you're walking in righteousness with the Lord, like, you said, John, like, you know, you just dedicated yourself to God. It produces that boldness in you, doesn't it? You know what I mean? You know who you are and you know that you, God's with you. And so it enables you to go forward. And so I just, I just, it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that we are to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. And, you know, you all know these scriptures, like, but, you know, we've got to do it. Like, that's the hard part. Reading it's easy. Doing it's a different kettle of fish. And uh, I want to share a little testimony about a Chinese pastor. And I read this in that uh, Heavenly Man. Has anyone read that book? Yeah. yeah, everyone read that? It's awesome, isn't it? And basically this Chinese pastor, he got hung like, you know, they put, stacked up chairs and tables, yeah, and he's got a noose around his neck and they put the family there and they say, look, deny Jesus and you can go home with your family. And he said, if my blood spills all over the floor, I'll never deny my Lord. And they just kicked the table and just hung him right there and then martyred him. But if, if you want... Walking right with the Lord, you know what I mean? If you want 100% walking with the Lord, you know, if you had loads of secret sins in your life and you were, you would probably wouldn't be able to do that, you know what I mean? Because you wouldn't want to meet the Lord, you know what I mean? You'd be like, I don't know if I'm not, I'm ready to meet the Lord. You'd be like, actually, you know, you just give me like 10 minutes, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's so important, like, if you're going to face death, like, you know, you need, you need to be, you know, having that tight walk, fully sacrificed to the Lord. And so that's uh, my, my first thoughts on that repentance. And then the second point I've got is uh, discipline. And uh, so 1 Corinthians 9.27, and Paul talks about how he strikes a blow to his own body. And he, he, he's, he's like, he disciplines his own body. And there's another scripture about um, like the athletes, you know what I mean? And, and uh, they, they train this is so disciplined and they train like five days a week and hours and hours in the diet. They don't eat nothing crap at all. A hundred percent dedicated just to get a medal. Like, you know what I mean? And a bit of earthly praise and, they, and them athletes put Christians to shame. Like, and they don't even have the Holy Spirit. They don't even have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and they're so disciplined. And that's how a Christian's supposed to be. That's what Paul were like. Yeah? He was so disciplined. And he, oh yeah, no, the scripture in 927 says, I discipline my body, at least after I preached, I myself be disqualified. And so we don't want to be preaching the gospel and living an undisciplined life and then one day being disqualified. You know, that's what Paul's saying here. And uh, 
So, yeah, we need to be living that disciplined life and uh, disciplined in every area of our life. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm not saying that I am perfectly disciplined because I'm not, definitely not. But I'm, I'm working on it every day. And um, so the third point I've got, it's a study. And uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Study to show yourself approved by God, a workman that need not be ashamed and, and is able to rightly divide the word of God. And so in my early days, when I first got born again, I had the zeal, I had the fire and the boldness. Like I just met Jesus, like, you know what I mean? And I, I just couldn't wait to tell everyone about Jesus. So I ran out onto the street, started telling everyone, like, Jesus is real, Jesus is real, and telling me testimony about what happened. And then people would turn to me and say, well, I don't believe in Jesus. And they'd say, I believe in evolution. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And I didn't know how to refute that at all. You know what I mean? Or a Muslim would say, like, oh, I'm, I'm Muslim and I believe in Jesus, but I believe this and that. And, and I just didn't have the answers for these people, you know. I didn't know how to stand up for my faith. Or JWs used to tear me up. I used to meet JWs and say, turn to Psalms, turn to this, turn to that. And I'd be like, what, what, you know, I couldn't answer them. I'd end up just walking away with my tail between my legs, like, you know, thinking, oh, well, that wasn't very good. You know what I mean? So I thought, right, I need to study. So I just really pressed in and I studied and studied and I found out. I went on YouTube and how to witness to Muslims, how to witness to JWs, how to witness to Mormons, how to witness to Buddhists how to witness to people that believe in evolution. And I just studied and studied and I just did literally like months upon months upon months of just studying all this stuff. I thought I'm never going to be stuck out there again. Like, and, and now by the grace of God, he's given me the wisdom now and uh, I'm able to put up an amazing defense for the gospel. Hallelujah. You know, and, and people can throw any type of questions and, and I just, I just answer them daughter down. It's like, boom, 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 you know, and uh, it's like um, the story of David and Goliath, yeah? And uh, David cut off Goliath's head with his own sword, you know? And so it's like the Bible is sharper than any other sword. But these, these other people have their swords. They have their books. And if you do the right research, you can cut their own heads off with their own books. You know, you can, you can even win, win them. You can win a Muslim to Christ through the Quran. You know, you can... You can there's enough in there to win them to the, with the Quran. And so when you have their own sword, you can just cut Goliath's head off with his own sword. You know what I mean? And so, and then you show them like, you know, look, this sword I've got here, it's a lot sharper than your sword, mate. You know what I mean? And so, you know, that's um, number three, yeah? And um, so I've got number four. We want to be imitators of Christ. And so this is quite hard for a lot of people, this one, because it takes a lot of faith, this. This goes hand in hand with faith, like, and it says, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 and 2, Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And um, the way I see the, it, this, personally, it's like, we want to imitate Christ in all areas, in his character, and the way that he had so f compassion and love and mercy for broken people. But also, we want to imitate him in, in the way that he taught, the way that he preached, the way that he, what, how did Christ do it? When, if Christ was out on the street walking up now with his disciples, how would he be evangelizing? What would he do? Would he be standing on the corner just giving out tracts? Would he? Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying, there's, I love tracts. They're amazing, yeah? And I do give out tracts and I give out Bible cards. But would you see Christ just standing there with his apostles just giving out tracts? No, you wouldn't. He'd be raising the dead. He'd be casting out devils. He would be doing mighty miracles, signs and wonders. And uh, we'd see revival, you know, because that's what that brings you. Yeah? And so it's like, you know, if, if, are we truly imitating Christ to, with what we do? You know, do we look like Christ with what we are doing? You know, and that is what you need to ask yourself. And if we do do what he did, then we will see much, much more amazing results. You know what I mean? And little testimony just from yesterday, Friday night or Thursday night on the street. And we was just getting out on the street and then led these two lads to the Lord. And um, 
One of them were already believing, the other one didn't, but we got them born again. One of them started uh, speaking in tongues on the street right there and then. He got filled with the Holy Spirit. They both got filled with the Spirit. And then I asked him, like, my favourite question is, Dave, have you got any pain in your body? You know, it's my favorite, that's usually my first thing that I say to people. Like, you know, I don't, like, stick a track or say, do you want to talk about Jesus? I say, have you got any pain? You know, because I want to demonstrate the power of God. Hallelujah. I want to come in the power. <laughs> And then they go, whoa, what, that, that's amazing. You, go, you know what that is? That's the power of Jesus Christ right there. Hallelujah. You know, and then, and then they're like, wow, this is real. You're like, yeah, it is, man. And then you hit them with the gospel. And boom, more often than not, they give the life to Christ right there and then on the street. You know, we see it that day. Yeah. The young people, they all give their life to Christ. Right. They, right. And they all got filled with the Holy Spirit. They were hearing God speak to them in English. God was telling them, you know, different stuff. And we see that. I see that all the time. I just get God to speak to me. I'm like, Lord, you tell him. Tell him, Lord. And the Lord will speak to me and say, you need to behave. You need to listen to your mom. You need to, you know, in one case, he said, have fun to these kids. He said, have fun. Don't tell lies. We're a bunch of kids. And, and I'm just like, Lord, just speak to him in English. Tell him what, tell him, tell him what I can. And the Lord just starts speaking to them. there, hearing the voice of God. And it's much easier that way. Less pressure on me. I just let the Lord do it. I get there. I go, right, Lord. Do your thing, Lord. You know, because it is him. Amen. It's not us. It's him. Hallelujah. Or is it him? Or is it us? And if it is us, we need to let him do it. Because he's better at it than us. So, oh, I got here. Yeah. How did his followers do it? You know, the followers of Jesus Christ. What, what did we see them doing? You know, they were healing... Everyone brought all the sick. And in the early days as well, the followers, they couldn't cast out a demon. They couldn't do it. They had, there were times when they prayed it didn't work. And they go to Jesus, oh, Lord, it's not working. And Jesus went, oh, you have unbelieving, perverse generation. How long do I have to stay with you? Bring him to me. Boom, cast out the demon straight away. Hallelujah. And then he said, this type comes out by fasting, which, you know, does that mean that we need to fast? Or does that mean that they need to fast? I don't know. I'd say probably we need to fast. But eventually his followers grew and then they got 100% miracles, you know what I mean? And, and we know when we read the book of Acts, they went from not being able to do it to being able to do it properly. And it's, so if we, we might have bad experiences where we pray for someone, no happens, but it doesn't mean we should stop. We just say, go to the Lord and say, Lord, why didn't it work? And he'll be like, you unbelieving and perverse generation. <laughs> he'll rebuke you, you know what I mean? All right, Lord, I'm sorry. And just carry on. Because it doesn't, it doesn't always happen like I've seen people not get healed, but you know, you just don't give up, keep going. So, number four, we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. So, what does what does it look like to be led by the Holy Spirit? And this is where the fivefold ministry is so important. Like, but in John chapter 3, verse 8, it says, The wind blows where it wants. And this is exactly as it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. So, you know, when, when you're born of the Spirit, yeah, you've got to listen to the Spirit. You can't just go to the same spot every week, you know, like, right, I'm just going to go to the same spot and do the same thing. No, you have to ask the Lord, where do you want me to go, Lord? You know, you have to get in fasting and prayer and seeking Him and saying, God, where do you want me to go? He might say, I want you to go to Afghanistan. You're like, well, sack that, I'm not going there. <laughs> Right, well, I'll get someone else then. And someone else will be like, I'll go. You know? So you've got to be led by the Spirit, yeah? The Spirit, is, it's like people that are led by the Spirit, you don't know where they're going to be. could be anywhere. And, um, you know, the fivefold is so important, yeah? So this is where we have the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, the pastor, and uh, the apostle. And then when you have that fivefold active in a group, yeah? And you're all working together as a unit. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. And we've actually seen this work firsthand, right? So we have like house meetings, and we had a house meeting one night, and we had the apostle, the evangelist. We had we had the fivefold active, and um, so we we literally like prayed and seek the Lord, and we asked where did what was to go, and then he told us what area to go to. So we went to the area. We spied out the land. Some of the lads did. And they found these three areas, yeah? And so we got back and we were praying, right, Lord, which one of these areas do you want to hit? And, that, and the Lord told us, like, I got a vision and I seen, like, a yellow stone houses, you know, like the sandy stone. And so I said, is some of them, one of them areas, like sandy stone? He said, yeah, only one of them. 
So we said, right, the Lord wants us to go to this certain area. So we knew, yeah. And so then we prayed and we asked the Lord to give us dreams and that. And we were going into the town first and we were going to like proclaim the gospel in the town and have a meeting point. Then we were going to go door knocking because we'd been sent to a specific area. And so we went into the town, pro proclaimed the gospel. And as well, the brother had a dream, yeah, that we're going to go into this shop as well, this certain shop. And there's a woman in there with black hair that's searching for God. And, you know, we've got to go lead her to the Lord. So this day we went and we went to this shop and we were looking for this woman and we couldn't find her. And then we, as we were just about to walk out of the shop, she came walking out, staff room, woman with black hair. Thought, no way, there she is. So we went to her, speak to gospel. She said, yeah, I have been praying. And we said, right, the Lord sent us. We told her about the dream. We led her to the Lord. Boom, she got filled with Holy Spirit right there and then in shop. And it was like proper led by the Spirit. And then we went into the town. We proclaimed the gospel. We met another woman in the street. And we led her to the Lord. And then we said, oh, we have a meeting tonight. We'll meet you there. And then we went to this sandstone area. And one of the sisters got a, uh, the, the Lord told her a door number. Said, we need to go knock on this certain door number. So we went to this door, knocked on the door. Woman answers the door. We said, right, we've been sent here by God. Yeah. And said, oh, you've just, you've just been speaking to my daughter in town. You, it's you in town, isn't it? And it's the, it's the mother of the daughter we just led to the Lord in town. And she's been on the phone to her mom saying, oh, I've just met these Christians and this, that. And it was like proper, like being led, like, like, like when um, Abraham sent um, Isaac, he sent the servant to go find the Rebecca. And he said, you know, I'll go before you. Like, you know what I mean? And the, and the angel of the Lord went before him. And so he, he just went and, and he found that Rebecca and he brought her back. And it's like, that's what we need to be like. If we, if we get led by the Spirit, we find a Rebecca on the street. We don't just let her go. We say, oh, Rebecca, do you fancy going for a brew? You know what I mean? When can we meet again? Can we meet? Can we, you know, can we have, can we, you want to be like, it's not just about giving someone a track and then just, you know, you want to be, Finishing the job, you know, making the disciple, you know, doing the, trying your best. I mean, many times you're scattering seeds, you know what I mean? And that's all right, but, but you're always looking for that one, that person of peace. And you find that one, you're in there. So the final bit I've got now, it's the response to the gospel. So the response, what is, what is the response to the gospel? So we've got um, Acts 16.29. Does someone want to read that out? Anybody want to read Acts 16.29? Someone find Acts 2.38 as well, but we all know what that says, don't we? Acts 2.38. We should, you don't have to look that one up, do you? And someone find Acts 5 to 12. Acts 8, 5 to 12. If somebody can find Acts 8, verses 5 to 12. So Acts 16.29, Acts 2.38, and Acts 5 to 12. And we're all from the book of Acts because the book of Acts is what the church is supposed to be like. That's 1629. Yeah. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Is that the right one? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So the gospel, when it's preached properly, it'll, pre it'll produce fear and trembling. You know, when you hear the true gospel of Christ, it'll make you feel fear and you'll tremble. Because I know when the Holy Spirit came upon me. I absolutely packed my sin, and I don't know about you guys, I started repenting. I was like, Lord, I realized I'm a hellbound sinner. And I was like, I'm sorry. Just repented at the top of my voice like I was shaking and trembling. And I've, I've been in that situation where I felt the presence of the Lord so strong. I've been on my face shaking and crying, you know, because it's so, it's so holy. You know, have, have you experienced it? Where that, when you feel that holiness and you just, you're on your face, you're just like, wow, it's like, like Johnny was laid down dead, wasn't he? Was. You know, before the Lord, he just, he was down dead. It's like, boom. So the gospel and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. So it's usually in the early days, you, if you someone's preached the gospel properly, you know, it's going to convict you of your sin, that Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38, and Peter said, 
Um, they all, again, they were all in fear and trembling. Peter had preached, preached the gospel. They were all panicking. What do we do to be saved? And he said, every one of you is repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so that there we see the response to the gospel is to repent and be baptized and then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And there's teachings going around today saying that you don't even need to get baptized. I hear these teachings that say, oh, you don't need to get baptized. And I'm like, well, I've, I don't know where you're getting that from, like, because it's not the flipping Bible. You know what I mean? So the response to the gospel should be, I need to repent. I need to get baptized. I need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, and Acts 8, 5 to 12. So who wants to read them? And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached the gospel unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which were of faith, hearing and seeing the miracles which they did. But unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed of them, and many taking the palsy, lame, were healed. And there was great joy in that city. But there was a certain man named Simon, who for four times in the same city. Oh, no, we don't need to go that far. I think we're going too far there. So basically there, what we see is Philip, wasn't it? It's Philip. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. So we see Philip and Stephen, yeah? So the, you can imagine, yeah, the apostles, right? The great apostles, the 12 disciples. And they're, they're going about doing the Lord's work every day. And then there's this dispute about, you know, food and stuff, yeah? So they say, and there's all these other people that are filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah? These are just normal people like me and you, you know? They, these are just like, you, anyone who's filled with the Holy Spirit. And they said, we ain't got time to mess about with tables and food. He said, appoint seven people and let us crack on with the word, yeah? So the, Philip got appointed to table washing. Now, I don't know, maybe there could have been a bit of pride in the apostles, you know, like, you know, we, we're not washing tables, you know? <laughs> So Philip, this little table washer, you know, that's all he was. And Stephen was a table washer. And Stephen was so bold, he got martyred for Christ. And then we see Philip here, and he's being used mightily by the Lord. And what, what did people see here? They saw the signs and the wonders. They saw the demons being cast out. They saw the miracles that it, Philip was doing. And they heard the message he was preaching. And they were like, and that, what was their response? They got baptized. You know, they got baptized. And you, all the baptisms in the book of Acts were the same day. All took place on the same day. It's like they believed, they received, they repented. They said, come on, let's get you some water. And they got them straight in the water, straight away. And so, you know, the response, the true response to the gospel, like the kids, 16, 17-year-old lad, preached the gospel to him, demonstrated signs and wonders, a little kid, I got the lad who was only being born again 10 seconds to pray for his mate and he got healed. And so then they're getting baptized now. They've already messaged me because I told them, look, you need to be baptized. You need to, you know, you need to repent. You've just done that. You need to receive the Holy Ghost. You've just done that. You need to be baptized. Have you been baptized? They're like, no, no. I said, well, you need to get baptized. I said, so, you know, there's my details. Let's get you baptized. We'll get you down the river or wherever in a gym or anywhere. And we're getting baptized, and then I'll disciple them, train them up, get them on the street. You know, like you were saying, straight away, boom, boom, boom. The rest will catch up, won't it? And so, and I'll find a good church, get them into a church, you know what I mean? And they can connect with us and do what we're doing. So the response to the gospel is, you know, you need to be baptized. You need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to repent. And then you need to disciple them as well, the same way. And so... That is the end of my message. So, Father, I just pray this message will go on good ground. And I pray you'll change us, Lord. Break off the old ways. In fact, no, the new ways. Break off the new ways and let's go back to the old ways. You know, we want to go back to the old ways. So, Lord, fire us up, Lord. Yes. Give us faith. And, uh, yeah. Let's let's see the gospel go out in power. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen.
Man. Thanks, Thanks for that, Kevin. Hallelujah. Thanks. Man.